the Mac East 2022 Conference Division Preview will start off with, da, 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 get this put up on the screen here, Kent State. The Kent State Golden Flashes. They were 7-7 seven and seven last year. Their head coach, Sean Lewis, of course, their conference record was 6-2 and two. this year. Uh, they are projected to go five and seven, according to SP Plus. Now, along with that, uh, you look at their returning production. They are number one seventeen in the country, according to Bill Conley over at ESPN. That's fifty three percent offense. No, it's forty four percent. Number one twenty one defense was never that great last year. They were returning sixty two percent. Uh, let's talk about big losses. Quarterback Dustin Crum, the wide receiver Nikeem Johnson. They lost two starting offensive linemen. Who are the top players coming back here? Running back Marquez Cooper, cornerback Montre Miller, and then, of course, you got wide receiver Dante Cephas. Uh, let me tell you what you need to know about the offense, all right? What we're curious about is can the presumptive starting quarterback here, uh, Colin Schlee, I hope that's the name or the way that you say the name. Can he find a way to replace Dustin Crum's productivity? Crum was uh, was a fantasy football favorite as far as college fantasy football goes. Uh, when they lose the top quarterback, two of their top three wide receivers, multiple starting offensive linemen, like you know what you're going to get from a Sean Lewis offense. But uh, what is what are we going to get from the quarterback? Right, we know what Lewis wants to do. He was Dino Babers' guy for a long time. Um, can you just replace that? Like we've seen this happen a lot of times, Chris, with Hugh Freeze and and other of these offensive minded coaches, Gus Malzahn, etc. We know what the system is. We know what they're doing. Do you think that this bunch, even with only forty four percent returning production, can you just put new guys in and expect that offense to flow like that? Uh, to an extent, I do trust that they can do that. Um, Especially in this maybe conference, all- maybe right. Yeah, I was about to say at, at a national level, that's a that's a hard thing to, to to predict. But yeah, in this conference where we don't think there's a whole lot of strength, um, you know, I, I think they're going to be okay. I, I like them uh, this year better than I have. I, there's a world where in systems like this, I I never worry about replacing the quarterback. I just don't because I've seen it, yeah. too many of them. I've seen too many of them. I know it sounds crazy because it's the most important position in sports, the most important position on the team, but I've seen too many of them just come in and look exactly like the guy they replaced that was the best that that school had ever seen. And, that, and it's that's like true. the offenses just get better, the system just gets tighter, and the position players, the role players, make more of an impact or have more of a, 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 a determining factor on you know success or, or failures of the team than the quarterback does. I, I tend to agree with you. I think that the offense is going to be just fine. They were number 21 in offensive PPA per drive last year. The defense, that's where we have had an issue. They were number 122 in the country in defensive PPA. PPA, by the way, is predicted points added. Uh, they were 117 in defensive rushing success rate, number 116 in defensive passing success rate. Uh, but they did do something to try and get that thing back on track and that is they went and hired defensive coordinator Jeremiah Johnson from Northern Iowa. In FCS, Northern Iowa has been pretty brutal on defense. They have been off, like, not awful, excuse me, awesome. Like, they've been really, really strong on that side of the ball. Uh, They are the kind of team that plays physical on both sides. They like to run the ball down your throat, and their defense really lights you up. Uh, defensive backs, Montre Miller and Nico Bolden, they should lock down the secondary. They need their defensive linemen uh, like Zayn West and C.J. West, along with the linebackers, Harmon and Coleman. You need them to step up here. Uh, you know, it, if they can mirror last season's close game record, they went 4-0, then they're going to be really successful, right? 4-0 in, in one possession games last year. Uh, they have dominated the MAC since Lewis got into uh, into the league. They have 14-6. and six since 2019, uh, if you can find a quarterback that can run this offense, then they should be pretty good. The issue, of course, being the ridiculous non-conference schedule where they play at Washington, at Oklahoma, and at Georgia, and then they've got LIU as uh, as their lone home non-conference game. Uh, the schedule looks, you know, feasible. Like, I've got them going 6-6 six and six here. I think 6-6 I think six and six would be a really, really good year, especially after losing all that production. 
Yeah, so I've got them seven and five. So I've got them one game better than you. That's it. But, like, I don't think they're going to miss much of a beat. I think they're going to lose all those non-con games except for, you know, the the hyphenated school. And then other than that, you know, the, you know they'll, they'll be competitive and, uh, and should have a chance to win all of the mat games. I don't think they will win them all, but, but I think they'll be competitive. And uh, I definitely think they have the easier side of the division to, yeah. you know, yeah, they to, do. Do, to do a much better <laughs> job against, you know, their division. Yeah, I could uh, I could get with you on that. I can get with you on that. All right, so you've got them seven and five. I've got them six and six. Uh, yeah, I think I, I don't think we're going to see a lot of uh, really high win totals for the teams in the MAC East. I'll, I'll certainly say that. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.